So it's not the best day out here today. It's a little bit raining. So yesterday, I didn't film this for YouTube. I filmed it for TikTok. You guys, I have a TikTok account, Carving Fusion. I carved this guy, kind of like a green man tucked in there. Uh, I did some leaves. I got to give credit to uh, Uncle Kevin Carves for these leaves. I didn't really do much detail on leaves, but whatever. Just carved them in quick. It was a three-hour carve. I did put spar varnish on it, and I mixed it with 30% um, mineral spirits to thin out the spar varnish. And the next day, you get stuff like that white stuff in there. So that's easy to sand off. Just hit it quick with your uh, sandal flex, sand it off. Then this will get two more coats of spar varnish. So let's see what we're working on today. I also spar varnished uh, this guy. Um, and this guy and that guy, but he's turned around. I got this piece of Western Red Cedar beach combing. And so what I'm going to do here today is carve a green man. Um, yeah, so I don't even really know what I'm going to do, but I got to set it up and I'll just draw my wood spirit on normal. I'm going to make the wood spirit eyes and the nose bigger than normal because I don't want to carve little tiny leaves on this thing with my chainsaw and I, and I don't want it to take too long. So this will basically be um, eyes a nose and the rest will be big leaves all right is that carry on just before i get going here this is uh first gross western red cedar um i did notice this hole you guys should always look at the end grain before you start your piece i can see a crack here okay i can see little cracks in here but i can see this piece of rot this rot might go all the way through but it's okay I, i'll carve through it so anyways it's always good to look at your end grain before you start carving because in that way so I see this little crack here. Pretend this is a soaking pet piece of wood. I can see this little crack here. I know those cracks are come down here. And carry on down here. Carry on. See? Follow the cracks. You guys are carving wet wood. Or checks, whatever they call it. Cracks, checks. I guess this would be a check. And once it gets down here and goes like this, then it'll be a crack. Carry on. Okay, so. Yeah, this would be called driftwood. I'd call this bird shit wood here. So anyways, I just put this two by four on the back, put a screw in it, and I put two screws around the back there. Remember where you put your screws, people, because you don't want to hit them with your chainsaw chain, so I put everything around the back. Carry on. Uh, like I said, his eyes and nose are going to be more pronounced. I'm going to get this nose to pop out first, okay? So like this will be leaves here. This will be a leaf here. You follow me? Then I'll get his eyes in, then we'll do leaves all around here, and leaves down here. So this will be all leaves. Okay. You guys follow me? Right on. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> Eyeless.
carry on. Okay, so you guys can see there's a big face there now. Um, I was just talking with Ryan Cook, and if you guys are on Instagram, he's doing a big, huge, like we're talking the size of this tent. Huge green man with a bunch of like whimsical stuff around it, like leaves and um, just awesome. So you guys, without the, the help I got from Ryan Cook, I would be nowhere where I am at today. So I just want to say thanks again, Ryan. He's probably tired of hearing it from me. But um, I want to say thanks, Steve Kanzora, number one. Steve's number one. Ryan's number one with Steve. And Kevin Lewis is, is number They're all number ones. So anyways, now I'm going to dry the leaves on. So Abra with this big black pen. Abra, Kadabra. God, it's good to be magic sometimes. So you guys, when you're doing leaves like these with the big uh, chainsaws, it's just like Dremel carving, okay? So what I'm gonna do is like these, I'm gonna give these uh, leaves more shape, right? These are just reference lines. So you just cut true to the line on all your lines. Then you take it away. Like inside here, I'd make this deeper. So you want your, your leaves to be, like, think of fish scales overlapping, right? So this leaf's overlapping this one. So this, this hair in between goes deeper in between these two leaves. Sometimes, like you'll see here, I might need to take this this leaf right here, I might take need to take this a bit deeper so it makes it this whole leaf show this side, right? So just think of uh, overlapping like uh, bird feathers, fish scales, dragon scales. So um, I'm just going to cut the lines in and then maybe I'll do one sample of how I take it like deeper into there. Okay, carry on. I'm going to be my using my 2511. Carry on. Hey, sorry one more uh, quick tip so I just seen this crack in the wood here see that so why not make that part of this leaf right so forget about this line and carve that line so that way you get rid of a crack right okay now 100% carry on carry on okay so I kind of got into a little bit of a carving frenzy here you see so there's a leaf here and I cut in a leaf here a leaf here cut in between the two leaves so the tips are higher, right? Just overlap, overlap this. Anyways, me trying to explain this is like, well, I don't know, what can I use for reference? Me trying to explain this is like, um, uh, I don't know, I like going to work. I don't like going to work, but I like trying to explain it, but I don't know how to explain it, but I try to, but I just don't know. Do you know? I know who, 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 know, who knows. But then again, I don't. Do you? I might know. I think George might know. But anyways, so, okay, carry on. Oh, and one more thing. I'm pretty sure this is Douglas fir. But then again, I don't know. It might be cedar. Sometimes when I'm carving it, I think I smell cedar. But then I think I smell Douglas fir. But I think it's cedar. But then again, I don't freaking know. One thing I do know is that I'm going to use this uh, contraption I call the Monster the Mad Scientist uh, hooked me up. Uh, this is a Fordham Industrial Flex Shaft that Pete uh, connected it for me. It's got the industrial, you guys, when you get the industrial flex shafts for the Fordham, make sure you get the handpiece and the flex shaft because it's square drive and it won't fit your normal one. But then, but then again, I do know. So now what I'm going to do is kind of round everything off and um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that, anyways, I just, I'm kind of in a debate with myself, Douglas fir or cedar, but anyways, okay, bye. carry on. Okay. So, why I didn't know if this was cedar or... Douglas fir because it's so light when I grabbed it but it's pretty hard and it's pretty light for being cedar but that's okay it's cedar but then again I just <laughs> I don't know can't smell nothing um you know these this carving here is just like uh made just to sell right don't get me wrong I love doing it but it's made to sell I, I gotta make some money for those new saws but I also have decided about the new saws that I just do not need a battery saw yet. 
If I was going to get a battery saw, it would be the 140 with the speed charger and the extra big battery. And that would cost me $840. And I don't feel like spending $840. So I think I'm going to, Pete is going to help me um, do some mods on my electric saws. Well, he's going to try. He's already done one on his big still. He put a 20 inch, uh, 16 inch bar on his big still with a quarter, a 3 8 pitch. And he's going to do the same on my big still because we both have the same saws. Got Pete one too at an auction a couple years ago and I bought one off him. And then I got my Makita and Pete's going to try and rig that up for me so I can put a quarter pitch. He's going to try and find a sprocket to put a quarter pitch so I can put a carving bar on that. And I might buy a still electric plug-in saw. I don't need a battery saw. I got my Dewalt battery saw when I go beach combing or if I want to go carve and people don't hear me. That's good enough for now. I've come to my final conclusion. A plug-in saw is just good enough for me. Okay, so continue. I don't know what I want to do. I'm kind of... Yeah, just continue. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Don't let break. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. Carry on. Okay. So looks a little bit cartoony that's okay good for the kids somebody will buy it that has grandkids or something um, these leaves here they're a little bit flat on this side I could round them off if I wanted to and give them some shape but that's okay I'm kind of done with this piece oh what a couple more upgrades hold on uh, yeah okay so just like uh, carry on carry on okay so this guy looks cartoony. Like, what are you looking at? What you looking at? Over there at my at my old friends, right? This is well, this is a newer friend, but he's looking over at them, going, "What you looking at?" Anyway, so I'm not done with this yet. We got a couple more things to do. You guys, I could have uh, like carved the veins and these leaves, but I'm kind of done with it, you know, because you got it when you carve into cell, you got to think about how much time you put into a piece and what you can get back for it and whatnot, whatever. So. Carry on, one more upgrade, couple more upgrades. This took me a little bit longer than I thought it would. Put some abalone shell in it. Just to give it some extra character. Um, you know, I could have spent a lot more time doing perfectly fit abalone shells, but it's an outdoor piece, so it's not perfect. I just used wood glue. I had a little tiny bit of epoxy left for this, but uh, once I seat tall it or spar varnish it, that will lock those the abalone shell into place. And it will darken everything up. It's kind of like a cartoony character, I guess. You know, when you're doing bigger things like this, like I'll I'll know better for next time. I don't need to cut those leaves in so deep because they're like two inches deep and in cuts inside there. Um, just lots of other stuff. Make these leaves up here, like I said, give them more flow, more movement, not just so. I don't know. I like it. I'm not complaining, but it's I put a lot of time into it for what you know what it came out to be, I guess. But it will look a lot better once it's spar varnished. You know, I wanna, I'm want to. i excited to spar varnish. I don't know if I'm going to spar it or use Cetol. But I might use Cetol because it will give it a bit of color. I'm excited to do it, but I'm not going to do it because I'm going to give it a day or two to dry out. Let the wood breathe it and dry out properly, right? Because when you do it too fast, you can get that milk. There's a friggin' thing. Get the milky colors. I still got to finish this. I still gotta finish this. I got another wood spirit back there I gotta finish. But tomorrow I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna finish off the two uh, 
Uh, this is going to be quick wood spirits, so I can sell them cheap. Uh, two wood spirits on the last two pieces of driftwood I got. Let's go outside, have a look. Yeah, so I'm going to take this this uh, Makita saw to Pete right now. It's got a 3/8 sprocket on there right now. It's the 4,000. But it's got a, Pete's going to try and see if he can get a uh, quarter pitch sprocket so I can put a carving bar on that. So these are the last two pieces I got left. I got this big sucker, which is Douglas fir, and I got this wood here, and I got no idea what this is. But it, it's soaking wet. I'll let this dry a bit more, see? This is like the milky color that I said. Just make sure you, I don't know why that did that. Maybe I put too much uh, mineral spirits in it. But this is not a piece I'd sell cheap. This is like, I don't know. So tomorrow, I'm gonna carve this and not just simple wood spirits. Hope you guys are all good. Hope everybody's having fun and uh, having a good life. Just enjoy it everybody. We'll talk to you soon. See you later. Carving Fusion, over and out. Carry on, carry on there Steve, carry on. <laughs>